What do you see when I show you this image? You're probably thinking Luca, and you'd be right. But I want you to look closer. Apart from this stunning animation, gorgeous composition, and incredible lighting, there's one thing that Pixar movies have perfected over the years, and this is something that a lot of other animated films struggle to attain. I'm talking, of course, about photorealism. But Pixar has pushed this to a whole nother level. Look at the rocks here in Luca or even the vehicles here in Seoul. They're tactile, vibrant, and believable. This, in combination with obvious cartoon characters, shouldn't work, right? Well, that's why in this video, I'm going to discuss the foundations of why this works and how we can replicate this ourselves. 20, 40,000, three million. So how do they do it? Since Pixar's inception back in 1979, there's been incredible innovations in between each feature film's release. The reason scenes like this work is because the characters aren't falling into the uncanny valley. This, of course, is that unsettling feeling you get when something looks like a human, but something's not quite right. Our monkey brains are great at spotting when an image looks unnatural or out of place, and this can quickly break the viewing experience. That's why Pixar doesn't bring in elements of real-world footage into their films, usually. We instead have an established character that has been meticulously crafted through concept art, look development, and test renderings to ensure they look believable in the 3D scene. Okay, well, how did they go from this to this? Enter textures. Much like everything else in a 3D pipeline, textures are a crucial step in creating believable 3D objects, environments, and of course, characters. There's multiple different texturing workflows, styles, and softwares, but Pixar has been moving closer and closer to photorealism. So how did they do it? Careful my TV though. I know you clumsy as for real. PBR or physically based rendering is the standard workflow for films and photoreal scenes. And this is the workflow that Pixar uses to create textures for their characters, objects, and everything in between. So what is PBR? Well, it's the idea of using multiple different texture maps to control the properties of a material. Once combining each of these together, you get your photoreal material. So for example, this rock wall, all of this geometry, like the points and crevices, aren't actually there. When we take away the rented view, it's simply just a flat plane. But how is this possible? Well, the depth, like these small cracks and crevices, is being driven by a displacement texture, which is pushing and pulling the geometry based off of these darker and lighter tone. In combination, it's also using a normal map to determine how the lighting should affect the surface of the material, like these smaller scrapes and cracks. These details obviously aren't there on the plane, so it's done by creating fake details in which the lighting can accurately reflect from. All this detail, again, is driven from a wacky purple texture here known as the normal map. Without this normal map and displacement map, the lighting would be completely flat and uniform across the entirety of the plane. Combine these elements with a roughness texture to show you where the rock surfaces are most shiny or rough. And lastly, a simple color texture to determine the color of the moss and the rocks. There are a whole slew of other texture properties which surmount to creating a photoreal, believable material. And that is the basics of the workflow. If this style of texturing sounds fun to you and you want a more in-depth guide to this style of texturing, you should definitely check out my friend Southern Shoddy's online course over at Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. This class is aptly named Deep Dive into Texturing, which I've taken myself. He goes over the basics of the texturing workflow in Blender to bring this stylized character to life. I already know the basics of texturing, but I joined Skillshare for this class, because it's great to get a refresher every now and then. I think the real value you get from Skillshare is having straight to the point learning from people who are passionate about their craft. There's no ads and it's a curated platform to spark your creativity. If that's not your speed, then why not try out some of my classes? In my most recent product animation masterclass, I take you step by step through a full freelance project covering everything from modeling all the way through to texturing, animating, and rendering. 
Skillshare has hooked me up with an amazing offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Those free trials are not gonna last long, so grab it below and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so Pixar uses PBR textures, but there's still something missing. And that something is what pushes the believability of Pixar films to the extreme. No matter where I turn, there's no escape. The suffering is unbearable. When objects like toys are used on a daily basis, you should expect some kind of wear and tear. And this is what can bring materials to life simply by layering and stacking these kind of details. For example, check out this wallet. I've had this thing for nearly a decade now, and you can see it's had a bit of a rough life. There's fraying of the leather around the edges, dirt and grime build up under the metallic clip, and a bunch of weathered creases, scratches, and loss of color from consistent high use areas. These are all types of surface imperfections. And it's what allows you to push your materials to an absolutely unreal level of detail. For example, the antique shop from Toy Story 4. It's obviously an old weathered shop and it's been there for probably decades. So things like dust, cobwebs, and damage to floorboards is a given. To get these kind of grunge dirt build up areas, it's actually fairly simple. All you need to do is mix two different materials together. One is the PBR material and the other will be the grime or dirt buildup. Once layered on top of each other, you can start to build out incredible materials. And this can be done on a near infinite scale. This in essence is what Pixar texture artists have done for each object on every scene in Toy Story 4. And it's what allows them to get those subtle beautiful surface imperfections. I absolutely love this subtle detail of the cobwebs because in real life, it kind of just happens. But in Toy Story 4, they had to take a more digital approach. You might think, okay, they probably modeled these cobwebs, threw a cloth sim on it and job done. But no, they actually created tiny digital spiders and had them create these cobwebs in build up areas like cracks and crevices over time, which is just amazing. There's absolutely a ton of different aspects that help elevate Pixar movies to what they are today. For example, modern lighting, real world camera techniques, and the massive challenge presented of even rendering some of these scenes. But I wanted to cover the basics of material creation for this video because it's a problem I see a lot of beginners struggling with when it comes to Blender. And if you want to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here. 